YouTube, there is no firearms in this video. Welcome back to the Loki Argonaut YouTube channel. In this episode, we will be disassembling a payment chief. I wanted to adjust the regulator and I was also having gauge issues so I was hoping to fix that. The first step to working on a PCP air gun is to degas it to make sure you don't work around high pressure air. You want to do that as slow as possible, you might have to screw the degassing screw a bit more to make sure that it is empty. Some rifles do not have a degassing tool, you need to unscrew the gauge or whatever. I don't know which way is the best, this one came with a degassing tool so I'm using that I guess. I was not filming at this point because it took a while but it, it leaked by the gauge at the end, I don't know if that's normal but let's act like it is. Don't forget to take your degassing tool back out or the air will bleed out of your compressor or pump when you fill it. My faulty gauge was stuck on 1000 but yours should be showing zero I guess. Make sure that your armor is not all the way in or you might wreck your valve. Then usually you will punch the safety out by putting it on safety and simply hitting on it but I did not put it back on so I'm removing the stock screw and sliding the action out. Make sure that you have the two washers that are on that screw or one will most likely fall on the ground later. Quick note, you could do that in a different order but I removed the gauge after that. You simply get a wrench around it and start unscrewing it. If you are not installing a regulator, you might want to notice where the gauge is pointing so you can screw it about where it was and how hard it was. I might have over tightened mine a few times. I did squish this o-ring that I'm taking out at the moment. I really doubt that this had anything to do with my prior gauge issues. I probably did that while trying to fix it. I don't really know but this o-ring is looking pretty bad so we are going to change that later. Then I proceeded to remove the fill nipple but you might want to remove the breech and barrel before doing that because it was in the way and it was not really practical. This time since it was not cross thread from factory the whole unit came together but sometimes it will not and you will need to unscrew it with those holes and mine was cross threaded so I needed a vise to achieve that the first time but now it works pretty good. Now for the fun part. Your rifle might not have this cord because this is a rope that I've tied to the regulator hoping to be able to adjust it easily which did not seem to happen. <clears throat> I don't like that. Let's take it all apart I guess. This might be a video in itself after all. Leave a thumbs up if you are glad that Loki kept filming even though he was struggling with his regulator adjustments. By the way this is a Spears Custom Parts barrel band and the original one needs the front sides to be removed in order to remove the barrel in order to slide the barrel band off so this is a game changer. After that you want to cock the rifle so you can access the big breech screw. I recommend that you decock it at this point or you will need to dry fire it again later and the less dry fire the less stress on your valve and the better it is so do that now before removing the second bridge crew which is on the back a little bit smaller. It seems to be the same bit but don't quote me on that. I, I'm not a professional. I'm just a, a gunsmith YouTube. I'm a gunsmith YouTube. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> you can now lift up your breech and barrel if you did not remove that with the barrel band. Then I remove the breech shield. I'm not sure if this part is needed but I don't like the idea of the valve rubbing against it if that can even happen so I remove it. Next if you want you can remove the hammer pin. This is basically the pin that the bolt is pulling on to cock the hammer. You can then turn the rifle over and remove the front trigger screw which is a flat head for some reasons and then remove the second trigger screw which is a Phillips and the trigger assembly should lift right up. In there you have your spring adjuster, the spring and the hammer and you also have this 
circle thingy that the stock and breech screws in. The valve on this rifle is pinned by three screws, so make sure to take that out before trying to remove it. Overall, if you don't have issues with the fill assembly, this is a very easy rifle to work on and it is a very simple and effective design. The only annoying part is that you will need some sort of tube to push the valve out or you will wreck the valve stem. What I'm using here is a random metal pole with some tape to not scratch everything, but my regulator was stuck inside of there for some reason. It is usually easier than that, but this time I had an hard time doing it. You want to be slow and careful or you will rip out the seals. If you did not notice yet, I'm trying to push the valve and the regulator the long way out because there is less holes and less holes means less chances to rip an o-ring out. So you most likely want to push the stuff the long way out there is only threads at the end of it and that's better than sharp holes you also want to keep your silicone oil close to apply a little bit on the seals as they go through those holes because you will most likely break around one o-ring per disassembly at least that's my experience yet okay maybe less than that if it goes well but having extra o-rings can be a good idea if you plan on doing that that's about what you don't want to happen and that's usually where you break seals use a bit of oil and patience and go slow this time my regulator was stuck but usually it goes about like when I will put it back together. This is the first time that I ever had to use a hammer and you usually don't, but I had to use brake cleaner to wipe grease and have a better grip before. Well, I think that got one o-ring out. Good thing that the gauge block ones are compatible or I would be in trouble. I eventually managed to get the regulator out and also the reason why it was stuck in there and also the reason why I had issues after this video. I assumed that this big piece of o-ring was coming from something rubbing like the regulator or the valve that I'm getting out at the moment, which was fairly easy to slide out. But spoiler, it was not, okay? I'm not going to lie, right now I'm pretty confused because this is the worst looking o-ring in everything that we took out and I found this in the the rifle. So, uh, what the crap! Before reassembling it, make sure that it is clean and not full of oil. Silicone oil is good, but can also be bad. So. Don't put too much of it, only to protect your o-rings. Talking about o-rings, at this point I still did not know that there was o-rings inside of a regulator. So yeah, another spoiler, this is where the big piece of o-ring came from. And at the end of this video, the rifle started to leak. Which leads me to tell you, if your rifle is leaking by the gauge area, the gauge might not be the issue. If your gauge block is leaking from the back it will act just like a gauge leak and you will tighten the gauge or try to seal it with teflon tape for no reasons this can happen if your regulator or gauge block seals are bad on the outside or if the inside seals of the regulator are blown because this one is releasing the gauge block okay i don't know man said Loki from the past. Anyways, in a rambling, make sure that everything is clean before putting it back in and make sure that all of your o-rings are nice. I had to clean the threads on my fill assembly because it was cross-threaded at first and the more I clean it, the better it feels. I also triple checked my o-rings because I could not figure out where this big chunk of rubber was coming from but the only one that was damaged was on the valve so I rubbed one on the gauge block to install on the valve. My calipers are currently out of battery and I'm too broke to buy new batteries or seals so PayPal me if you want more info on those seals. I'm just kidding I will try to find this info before this video goes out but I'm broke as fuck.
By the way, high pressure seals are harder than usual seals, so make sure to check that out if you want to buy a kit or whatever. I wish I had one because maybe it will have the o-rings I need to fix this lane regulator in it. Who knows? But the outside seals were looking decent and that was not my issue. I've tried sealing it with other o-rings in another disassembly after my issue and that did not fix it so thank you Vivor for the o-rings with the pumps <clears throat> I took a quick look at my gauge to see if I could find why it was faulty but not really other than the squish o-ring it was now finally time to adjust the regulator aka what I was here for most lane regulators are shipped at 120 bars if they are not for UK but I did not know that at this point and the lane website was down because he was in vacation. I had already taken the rifle back apart to adjust it one notch, so it should have been at 125 bars for the only shooting that I've been able to do with it yet. And it should have been at 145 bar now, but we blew a seal inside. Which makes me wonder if the regulator ever worked right, but who knows. Now, let's come back to the reassembly. Basically, I've hoiled these seals on the valve so it will slide better and hopefully not rip them apart. Then you want to clock it so the transfer port will be the right way when you're done with that and make sure to not spin your tube that you're using to push it with or that will spin the valve and you will need to get it back out. You might want to wiggle it by hand at first, pass the threads and after that use oil to make sure that you don't rip o-rings when you get to the gauge hole and stuff like that. Again we are sliding the valve and gauge block or regulator the long way in or it will pass next to more holes. Make sure to check if your o-rings are getting stuck. You don't want to rip them apart at this point or you will need to do that all over again. Also make sure to not push the valve too far in or the o-rings will get stuck on the pin screw holes aka those screws that I'm putting back in that are used to pin the valve in place and not get a 3000 psi tile in your face or something like it so yeah get, get that kind of tight but not too tight in fact this is about the tightest screws that you want on this rifle we tend to over tighten a lot of them and you don't really want that to happen once the valve is spinned and it cannot move by getting it by the gauge block or regulator if your regulator replaces the gauge block you can insert it back in I always use silicone oil on the seals to make sure that it is more slippery and I don't rip them off and then I wiggle it past the threads with my ends the more that I can and then you can use your pushing rod kind of thingy to, to, to push it in you just just do it buddy you, you can do it to be honest one of the only things that can go wrong is messing up seals and this is one of the best and easiest platform to learn on this is easier to work on than a QB78 as you can see right there when there is not a random piece of o-ring slowing things down it goes in pretty smoothly just be slow and make sure that your o-rings are not suffering if you do it fast in one go this gauge all will definitely mess up your o-rings and that's not fun once you got the gauge threads aligned properly you're pretty much done for this part if you took it off make sure to properly put your gauge shield back in there i made sure that it was very clean because i was already having gauge issues and i don't want dust to cause any more issues finding the right tightness for the gauge is kind of hard so if you have a reference like knowing where it was when you took it out that's a good thing if not you better under tighten it and have a, a silly leak and tighten it afterwards then mess up your o-rings i believe so then you can put your fill assembly back in in one or two pieces hopefully yours will be in one piece because that's more fun but yeah wiggle it in there until you reach the treads and really try to make sure you are in the treads because if that's cross threaded that will be hard to remove like it was the first time that i did <clears throat> thank you beam in for this cross threaded tube that holds 3000 p's for this part i like to remove the grease to make sure that i have a good grip but you don't want to tighten it super hard either now for the stuff that came out of the other end we got this round piece 
which goes over the valve stem and serves to screw the stock in and also the bridge make sure that it is positioned right in there or you will have issues later but it might move a little bit by itself while you do other things i'm not an engineer but this might also be stopping the hammer from hitting the valve too hard and smashing the valve stem into it aka this is where the hammer bounce is happening Correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, just make sure that the threads on the armor are facing up before putting your spring and spring adjuster back in or you will not be able to put the pin. Low armor tension is better for the dry fire part, but also for this. You should not be fighting the spring at this point. You can then put the back trigger assembly screw back in to secure that and then put the smaller flat one you want those snug but you really don't need to put a lot of pressure on any of those screws then you can simply put the cocking pin back in the hammer if you did not forget to clock it if you did figure it out because i did not after that before reassembling the bridge you want to make sure that the little round part that has threads in it is clocked properly too and that you did put your breech shield back in. The seal is pretty hard and I don't think you will damage it. So I do recommend that you take it off. Now we can put the breech back on. I do have the barrel on there because I have a nice Pierce Custom Parts barrel band, but you can really do that if you have the stuck one. You want to start with the rear screw, then cock it to access the bigger screw hole. Do not tighten any of them too much right away because it seems to matter on the barrel alignment which is kind of hard to see I guess if you do have the stock barrel band. This was an issue since I got it and it got better once I did took it fully apart. So if you get a brand new one and the barrel is crooked I guess the breach is most likely the issue. I did check the barrel before and that was not the issue. You don't want to be taking off the barrel too often or you will ruin the seal. So that's why I'm taking that as a whole assembly. I believe there is three seals for the barrel but also two holes to skip. So yeah, once your breech is tight and your barrel looks straight, decock it by holding the bolt. You can then put a little bit of oil to protect it because you got your dirty fingers all over it and carefully slide the action back in the stock and tighten it. Usually you would want to put the safety back in, but I did not, but I showed that in my trigger adjustment video. I also did not show the barrel bend part because I have a custom one and the barrel removing, but that's only two screws on top of the bridge. You should figure that out. Sadly, I will not be trying the regulator for now because I cannot afford seals and after pumping for a good while with my faulty pump, even though Spears Custom Parts gave me another one that is in the background right there, uh, the rifle is leaking, okay? I was all stoked because the gauge started to move, but yet it doesn't match the pump one. After a few experiments and disassemblies, I figured my issue which is the regulator itself and not the outer seals of anything or the gauge that was seeming to leak. It is still showing zero which is another issue of course but it is not leaking. The outside seals could do the same thing but that was not my issue but just keep in mind that if it leaks by this area and you still have the stock gauge block it can be your issue. A gauge block seal gauge gauge I don't know how to say that in anglais mon boy mais uh, ça commence à faire longtemps qu'on fait cette vidéo là quick note if you wonder why Barra is not offering the regulator on their website anymore it is because it was faulty and they had a lot of issues with that basically the regulator was missing a part and if you installed it it will not work so that's a bit of a bummer. I'm just laying that right there because this is about the same rifle and if you're watching this because you're chasing an issue, this might also be your issue even though I believe those did not replace the gauge block. One thing that I do want to mention though is that they have replacement parts that will fit the Beeman. So if you are in the USA, you, you might want to check that out. Also, another note, this is a custom lane regulator. It was sent to me by Ergon Archery Fund. 
but it should be around four years old according to lane regulators so maybe that's why the seal went out when i adjusted it the first time who knows west had nothing else in stock so we threw that in the box but what i really wanted to say about that is that the new model doesn't replace the gauge block and that's a lot easier to install also you should be able to tie a rope to it to be able to adjust it easily but that only works if you don't have a ripped out o-ring preventing that anyways i hope this video has been helpful i hope you've learned something i did learn a lot lately thanks to ergon archery fund for this opportunity i had about all of the issues you can have with my ergon stuff lately so hopefully we can learn together hopefully i can show you guys more stuff like fixing a vivor pump if you have the same issue as i did but ergon source canada just sent me a compressor which in fact was a lifesaver to fix this leak because only the first time that I've pumped it was a bummer so not having to pump while it is leaking out was amazing so give them some love thanks again to Spears Custom Parts for the replacement pump we tried fixing mine together but it was not working out so he decided to make me a gift he's a real cool guy give everybody some love if you want to support me some more subscribe like comment on this video and just be a nice viewer if that's not enough i got a membership and a paypal link somewhere so you can find that i doubt that youtube will monetize this video so yeah i'm not sure if i will be able to afford seals before the end of summer but if not i will probably edit the footage of those numbers and throw that back in the box while keeping the knowledge so we can't lose it all with that said i was really curious to see how the plus s will compare to the 2000 psi version but i might figure it out who knows stay subscribe to find out i'm out of here a quick merci à mon boy robert pour le chronograph thanks for watching and i will see y'all in the next one.